Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 series PLC debug mode. Now the Productivity Suite programming software has a debug mode. This will allow you to view and control the rung execution on your ladder logic code. These programming tools allow you to troubleshoot, find and correct errors in your PLC programming logic. We will be adding a couple of rungs to our existing start stop circuit we created last time in our Productivity 2000 PLC. Using the debug mode, we will explain the scan of the PLC and use these tools to sequence the logic. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, we'll see that we have our existing software that we created last time on the first rung, which is a start stop. You saw that we have our first start, start uh, switch here, and it goes through the second switch of our simulator uh, input and energizes this first output. First output seals it in, and so that's the start and that's the stop circuit. And you can see right now we are online to this controller, we're online right here, and we'll just turn on monitor so you can see actually actually what's happening. And we're in a run mode currently right now. So from last time. If we take a look at our hardware here, we have our uh, CPU unit, then we have our output unit, our input, and our simulator input with our series of switches here. So to take a look at this, how the software works, if we just turn on the first input, you will see now that that's made, the airport comes on and it seals it in. If I turn that off, it still remains on because we have the sealing contact. And it will remain on until I energize the second switch. And when I do, I broke the circuit and we're back to the start again. So the other two lines that we're gonna actually put in is the third switch here. If I turn it on, then the output would uh, uh, be on on the second one. And then we have the four switch. So that is our program. And you notice that I, do, I have purposely duplicated the output number two here. And we'll explain why that is later. So once we have that done, then what we're going to do is take a look at actually the CPU scan itself of the, C the PLC. So we go to our CPU and then go to get CPU scan time. It will come up and you will see that we have a, a chart here that basically tells me the average CPU scan time, which is 0.1 milliseconds. So that is 100 microseconds, which equals 10,000 times a second. Our logic is being scanned and updated. And what do I mean by scan? Well, we read our inputs, we execute our program, we do some diagnostics and communication, and then we update our outputs again. So that completes one scan of this PLC. So this is constantly doing this, in our case here, with every 0.1 milliseconds that will do this. It'll read the inputs, execute the program, diagnostics and communications, and update the outputs. So going back to my program here, we'll just hit close. And next what we'll do is after we've seen what the scan time is, we're gonna access our debug mode in our productivity suite. Now the debug mode will allow us to execute um, rung by rung instead of having the scan do it for us. We can slow that down and we can actually study and troubleshoot our logic. So the first thing we have to do is ensure that our switch on our CPU is actually in run mode, which it is, you can see here. And next, what we can do is we can put this into stop mode. We can do the stop mode right here for stopping the program. Or what we can do is go to CPU and we can go stop. And the third way is we go to applications tools and under my control CPU, you will see a stop. 
So once we energize it, let's say, are we really want to put this in stop mode? We'll say yes. So now our CPU is in stop mode. You will see that um, on our display, you also see a stop mode here. Next, what we'll do is we can put it into debug mode. Now you'll notice that when we were in run mode, the debug mode wasn't shown. It was actually grayed out. Now it's highlighted so that we can actually select it. We can select it here. We can select it under our application tools right here. Or if we go under CPU, we can select debug mode. When we do, what you'll notice is that our ladder logic changes. And now we have an arrow here. And this arrow will actually indicate which rung I'm currently on. And then we have these boxes here. And these boxes are to select um, breakpoints in our logic. And we'll explain that in a, in a little bit. So the arrow just indicates what rung we're on. And the um, box indicates a breakpoint for our logic. Also, when we're, we're in debug mode, you'll see that we have a series of icons here that are associated with the debug. The first one is execute outputs. What this will do, if I energize it, it will actually physically turn on those inputs or those outputs as our, it solves the logic at the end of the scan. If I don't have it on, then nothing happens, but um, we can still monitor our CPU. So in our case here, we're going to leave that on. Next is my single step. So how that works is let's turn on that first switch again. And you can see here, there's my first switch and it's going out through the normally closed by second switch. And after I execute this, it should actually turn this output on. So let's hit the single step. And sure enough, You'll see that my arrow went to the second rung, second rung, and it's executed this so that my output now is it now on. Now what I can do is I turn on the third switch. And we can execute again a single step. And now what you'll notice is now that my output the second output is now on because of my third switch. And now my current rung is at three. Now, if I do one more single step, then I'll finish the scan. It updates the IO. So first of all, it solves number three. So let's try that. So what you'll notice is that we now have an output of our first here that's on. First output's on, but our second one is now off. That is because here on the third rung, we didn't have switch number four on. So because we didn't have it on, it actually turned that output back off again. So even though rung two turned it on, rung three turned it off. That's why we say in PLC logic, the last one wins when it, turn, when it comes to actual physical IO. And so now we're back at the very start again. And we can literally turn that one back off again and we can do that once again. We can execute each step by step as we go through. Next, what you'll see is we'll say run one, run one scan. What that means is that it just goes through from number one. So it, rung, it does rung number one, rung number two, number three, solves the end of the scan process and goes back to number one again. So make sure that that works. Let's just turn off or turn on switch number two. So it will um, stop our motor once we do that, or stop our output. So let's run one scan. And sure enough, that's exactly what it did. It turned off that output. Next one is the run to breakpoint. So let's actually um, put a breakpoint right here. So that's rung number three. And what we'll do is we'll say run to breakpoint. And once we did, you just notice that our cursor now is at num rung number three, right at the breakpoint. Our output's on because the previous rung has turned it on. 
Then what we can say is show all breakpoints. And this is a good little troubleshooting guide so we can actually put that on there and show breakpoint and it will take us right to the rung in which we have the breakpoint. So if our cursor was somewhere else, we'd actually show that. But we have multiple breakpoints and multiple tasks in our task management. It'll take us to that location. So we'll close that. So very uh, useful instruction there. Next, what we do, that's run the breakpoint. And then we can keep on going. So we can set up several breakpoints and run to each one of them. Next one is our stop. So after our show all breakpoints, we also have a clear all breakpoints. When I hit that, you'll notice that all the points that I had are cleared. Now, if I go back and I go run the breakpoint again, you'll notice that we're kind of grayed out here. And that's because it's there's no actual breakpoint itself to stop. So it continuously goes. So our program, as we energize the switch, turn off that first one, turn on the second one, you'll see that we are actually operating as we would if it was actually in monitor mode or run mode. And in order to just actually stop that, we actually hit the stop command. So once we do, you'll see that our arrow now turns back to normal and we're back into the um, single step of our debug mode. Now the last one here is actually go to current rung. So if we actually close down this uh, new task that we have here and we're not sure where we are, we can always hit this go to current rung and it will automatically call up and say, look, you're right here. So it's a very nice feature to have if you're not sure you want to uh, test a few things out. So, and once we're done debugging, then what we can do is we can go to stop mode, which takes us out. So it says, do you want to put it the uh, CPU in stop mode? Yes, we do. And when we do, it's now stopping. Our outputs turn off. And now we can go back into run mode. So that is the debugging of our Proactivity 2000 using the Proactivity Suite programming software. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.